In this part of the session, we will talk about the identity of Polish migrants who live here in the UK and also about the social cultural change occurring as a result of this migration, especially social cultural change occurring in the country of origin of migrants. So let's say a, bit, a little bit about the identity. I already gave you percentages, statistics, numbers, how many female, how many male migrants, where they come from. Hopefully you remember all of that, this little overview of this group of people who reach also 1 million here in the UK. So identity of Polish migrants in the UK. We know from the research that the Polish citizens living in the UK, in spite of having lived here, a lot of them, almost 15 years, we are talking about the people who migrated straight after the EU accession, they still do not feel part of the British society. Uh, those who live in London, for instance, and that's the most significant group, they do can feel uh, part of cosmopolitan London community without classes. Um, uh, those who have uh, higher education nonetheless work in low-skilled uh, jobs, treat their work as a temporary stage which does not aff affect affiliation to the social class. Uh, pa Paulina Trevena says that um, maybe we should call the Polish migrants who work beyond their classifi classification, classifi uh, classifications qualifications, sorry, impoverished middle class. Because on the one hand, we should look at like different uh, factors that uh, define your status. So first of all, we'll have education. We're talking about people with higher education, but we're talking about people in, in a low, a low, low and badly paid jobs. Uh, so here we have these factors that are in mismatch. Uh, their education would, uh, would uh, Mm, uh, classify them as high uh, as, uh, as 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 middle class. However, uh, their their jobs and incomes as working class. Uh, we also have lifestyle migration that are that there are people who uh, even with their higher education in diplomas, uh, fifteen years ago wouldn't be able to uh, earn a living that they can live here having a, uh, a mortgage and being able to pay it, having a car or perhaps two cars for both partners and uh, having a comfortable life. And when we think about these narratives, uh, uh, how people say about the migration, how people say about the reasons that were behind their migration, uh, already mentioned Alexandra Galasinska will say that those are the narrative of normalcy and normal life, that living in England, even though they work behind their class, cla uh, sorry, qualifications, uh, they can afford a normal life, living without preoccupations, living without worries, uh, if they will be able to pay the bills. Uh, when uh, we think about uh, the sense of belonging, uh, the, the Polish migrants do not feel that they belong to British society, but they don't feel neither that they belong to Polonia. Do you remember what is Polonia? Polonia is this my old Polish migration. The people who migrated following the Second World War uh, who have lived here for a, a lot of time, who have had their children and grandchildren here, who had integrated uh, and uh, uh, are property owners, uh, have, ha have had good jobs and now are retired, obviously. But uh, there is this distinction between the, uh, the post-war migration and their descendants and the new post-enlargement migration and uh, lack of sense of belonging of the latter uh, to, to Polonia and also showing and drawing the boundaries by Polonia and uh, distancing from the uh, labor migration that followed the EU enlargement. Um, 
so uh, when we think about this group that doesn't belong, uh, we should uh, we should uh, uh, remember, however, that this group often uh, identifies with the wider Polish society. Back in Poland, uh, this group uh, often has Polish TV channels, other houses, and leave what we call immigration studies, transnational social spaces working, earning, spending money here, paying data taxes here. Uh, however, uh, with a strong sense of belonging uh, uh, back back in Poland. And these transnational links uh, also uh, very uh, strong links to their families and friends in, back in Poland. Those are the spaces where uh, the social cultural change can occur. So here I would like to invite you to, to talk about what we call social remittances. This is an example of social cultural change occurring as a result of migration. Uh, let's define first what I understand by social remittances. So social remittances are, and here let me read the definition for you, values, practices, identities, and social capital that circulate between the sending community and receiving community, that circulate between. So this, uh, this uh, exchange can happen both ways. And the first to introduce this concept of social remittances that just to remind you are values, practices, identities and social capital that can be exchanged between the place of origin of migrant and place of destination uh, has been, uh, this, concept ha this concept has been introduced by Peggy Levitt, an American author. And uh, uh, together with uh, Isabella Grabowska, Michał Garapich and Eva Jezwicka, I have described the social remittances uh, happening between United Kingdom and Poland in a book called Migrants as Agents of Change. Social remittances in an enlarged uh, European Union. And as, a co as, 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 as follows, I would like to tell you about uh, the outcomes of a research about social remittances between Poland and United Kingdom. But let's go back to theory uh, a little bit. So what are the people, what are the things that people uh, can uh, transfer uh, between the place of origin and uh, the place of destination? So we have found that uh, there are three uh, sets of, uh, of of things that can be uh, exchanged uh, between the place of origin and the place of destination and uh, can become a part of the social cultural change occurring as a result of of migration and those are things uh, those are material stuff ideas and practices Things are obviously material objects that may acquire social sense as a consequence of migration. So we can have an item that acquires, that gets a very different meaning as a result of migration. Uh, can, it can be a symbol of status. It can be an, uh, uh, an innovation, but it can also be contestated, as we will see in a bit when I will give you examples. Things concentrate various social meanings and can be polysemic, that is, can have different meanings. They can be contradictory, ambiguous, depending on their use. So let's say, for instance, let's look at the example of a Wellington boot. For, for Poland, these type of boots are the boots where, that you use to work in the field when you work in agriculture. Whereas here in the UK, um, Expensive Wellington books, book, boots can be a, a status symbol used, for instance, to walk your dog or uh, go, uh, go to relax in, can, in the countryside. So obviously uh, this is something that, uh, that uh, more 
uh, more uh, affluent people can acquire, and it's not it it and this Wellington boots for migrants who 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 live here in the UK is not only for the farmers something for the farmers but also for uh, middle uh, class uh, people who, who who use it not for work but for leisure. Uh, the other thing that we can acquire and that can be trans, tra uh, transferred and uh, and, and uh, transferred back to the place of origin uh, are ideas. And by ideas, we understand values and more general reflections about the organization of social life. So, for instance, that those can, those can be uh, new uh, values uh, regarding the political sphere, economic, but also moral, uh, real uh, ide ideologies. And finally, uh, what we acquire, uh, acquire, sorry, are the practices, behaviors connected to internalization of the social world. And uh, when talking about social remittances, we should uh, look at three different stages of, um, of the process of sending these new things, ideas or practices back home, as in case of uh, Polish migrants who live here uh, in Britain. So those uh, stages of the process are as follows. Acquiring, transfer and effect. So acquiring is when an individual is learning something new. For instance, observes middle class people who use their wellies, not to work in the fields, but to walk their dog. Um, uh, then transfer is the process when this individual who has learned something new, who has observed something new, who, uh, is, is, is transferring, is, is, is moving, is, uh, is passing this new idea to a, a larger community, be it their family, their uh, peer group, back in the place of origin. And finally, um, the, the, the last stage of, uh, of, 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 of this remitting is the effect. Whether uh, the, the, this novelty, uh, an idea, a thing, a practice is accepted and gets adopted in the uh, wider community of practice. Um, so what happens at each of the stages? Uh, and uh, as follows, I would like to uh, tell you about the possible effects to each of the stages, stages acquiring, transfer and effect, and give you practical examples uh, of these. And those practical examples will be quotations from the interviews with Polish migrants in the UK and Polish returned migrants back in Poland. So uh, when it comes to the first stage of the process that is acquiring, uh, though the three possible uh, uh, three possible reactions are uh, 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 the, the, there are three possible reactions, and they are as follows: resistance, imitation, and innovation. Resistance when somebody says no, I don't like what I'm observing in the receiving society. And here an example of Martina, who comes from a Polish town of Sokulka and uh, lives in London. And Martina told us about, uh, about the dietary habits of the British people that, they, that, that she could observe. Something that she, wasn't, uh, that she, that she didn't agree with. Uh, so namely, we are talking about the use of uh, ready-made products. And Martina says, what they eat and how it affects their bodies is terrifying. I don't like it. They buy ready-made food and put it into microwave. So she was saying about a certain uh, uh, eating habit of, of, of buying ready-made food. Obviously, uh, uh, this is a habit that she could observe among her uh, colleagues and friends here in the UK. I don't say that this is something that everybody does it does here. Obviously, it's also very much 
uh, class related related to income but without go, going into uh, into these details let's look at the resistance of, of martina towards this migration novelty this novel thing that she observed and here we are talking about the practice eating practice so she she says that it is terrifying to, for her and she says that she doesn't like it so we can assume that, is, that that the acquiring of this new practice will not happen because she doesn't like it she isn't, she doesn't agree with uh, so here the social remittance will not uh, occur another possible reaction to to acquire acquiring a novelty uh, is imitation and here give let me give you an example of imitation of a uh, of acquiring through an imitation of an idea uh, namely uh, the open uh, open uh, open and acceptance being open and acceptance of uh, of LGBT people so Mirek who comes from the same town and also migrated to the same city uh, told us if somebody is gay they want to get married they should do it I don't know them I won't pry into their business uh, we asked him have you always thought like that or the life in London taught you a lesson? He answers, earlier I haven't thought about it because I haven't seen it. In Poland I didn't see such people, LGBT people. People didn't come out of the closet. This is something that he says and uh, here the acquiring will happen contrary to what was happening in the case of Martina, the, the, the previous uh, participant, here their acquiring will happen, and it will happen uh, 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 in the way of, of imitation of the, uh, of the attitudes of the British people that he could observe. And finally, the acquiring can happen with an innovation. And in, an, on the following slide, we'll have an example of innovation regarding pra a practice. And uh, a practice, uh, uh, we will be talking about religious practices, namely going to the uh, Sunday services. Uh, Yolanta, who comes from Trzebnica, it's, it's another Polish town, uh, but lives in London, uh, says uh, about her religious practices herself raised a Catholic she goes to uh, different churches uh, here in uh, in in the UK because she uh, as she says to use her own world words she diver diversifies it for herself so obviously it is something that she doesn't uh, national, uh, she doesn't uh, uh, necessarily imitate uh, from uh, from what she observes in the British society. She just picks picks and chooses from the offer that she has available here, also to compare from what she learned uh, herself uh, going all her life to the uh, Roman Catholic Church. So this is about the acquiring, this first stage of uh, uh, social remitting. Uh, as, as you could see, we can have three different attitudes, uh, three different uh, reactions to acquiring a novelty, uh, uh, be it uh, a new uh, uh, thing, idea or practice. And the three reactions are uh, resistance, imitation and innovation. The second stage of the process of social remitting is the transfer, when the individual uh, 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 tries to pass uh, the uh, novelty to uh, the wider society or just a small group uh, back in the place of origin. And this transfer obviously can happen when the individual is here in the UK and is communicating with uh, uh, with uh, their significant others back in Poland, uh, but also after the return migration or during visits back in Poland. Uh, so here a handful of information about the transfer. Um, it occurs when the effect of what an individual has acquired are moved from a migrant to another person and from one situation to another. Uh, from one social cultural context to the other. So I think it's self explanatory. It's something that we already said. Uh, the effects of acquiring are rooted in the new contexts, 
back in the country of origin and have the same use. This will be in the imitation, but can also have a new use and this will be an example of innovation. Similarity of context. For instance, when somebody is using the new um, uh, things acquired regarding the wedding or uh, when somebody has, uh, is trying to transfer the, the novelties to a sports club back in Poland, makes the transfer more possible. When the, conf when the, when the uh, context, context is, is similar. Uh, and also, it's very important to mention that the language of uh, the language the person uses to explain the novelty, to uh, to try to convince the, the community back at home uh, to the novelties is very important. Uh, so it's important to use the same syntax, the same language, the same uh, vocabulary as the people who are your who, who an individual is trying to convince uh, to to use a new thing to change their values and ideas or to change their practices. Uh, migrants, uh, migrants can offer an alternative to the local patterns of behavior by giving an example. So for instance, let's take the, the example of this sports club. Uh, in the sports club, when uh, I, uh, for instance, a, a person who goes to train every day and is, is, is giving an example of new training practices, uh, this is the good ground for the, for the transfer uh, to occur and to uh, have the effect actually that others will adapt the novelty. Uh, they can either use a new thing or talk about the new idea, importantly, with the same language as the locals would, or practice uh, the new behavior. Uh, migrants can be active in promoting the novelties and thus transferring them. And here, uh, let's look at the two examples of the people who are particularly active uh, in uh, uh, promoting these novelties. And Ksenia who uh, comes from uh, Trebnica and returned uh, to Trebnica after, uh, after her migration to Scotland, uh, says that she, since she re returned from Scotland, quote, unquote, uh, uh, I've been fighting for everything. Now, first of all, I'm fighting for in vitro fertilization. Uh, she says this is something that she could observe uh, here in the United Kingdom. Uh, uh, free access uh, funded by the NHS to in vitro fertilization. Uh, also, uh, more uh, acceptance towards this uh, this uh, this uh, uh, this method of getting pregnant. And back in Poland, she tries to convince people to be more open toward. Uh, uh, in vitro, also uh, uh, also among her uh, pray group in in the church, and uh, uh, Kasia says about the different context of transferring the novelty, uh, novel uh, especially new practices. This is the context of work, uh, where uh, which is a very good context of 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 of, of uh, transferring the novelties because sometimes the contexts are similar and that was particularly the case of Kasia who uh, in Britain worked as a uh, carer in a care home uh, and she after her return to Poland she also worked as a, uh, a, 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 a as a medical uh, staff in an elderly care home uh, so when she arrived uh, in back in Poland, she observed that carers have been treated like cleaners, and I convinced them to make extracurricular courses, and now they are one level higher. Uh, she also introduced uh, uh, I knew things uh, when she when she convinced her manager to change the colors of the uniforms for cleaners, for nurses, but also for, for carers, so that uh, everybody has different colors. This is something, uh, color of uniforms, or this is something that she observed uh, uh, back in Britain during her work uh, in an elderly care house. 
So, uh, as, as we already said, we already analyzed the process of acquiring, the process of, of transfer of social remittances, and finally, the last stage is the effect. When uh, this, this novelty bead idea, uh, thing or practice gets accepted or not uh, in the uh, community back uh, in the place of origin. So again, there are poss three possible reactions uh, to transfer, and those are resistance, imitation, and innovation, again. And um, resistance obviously occurs when uh, other people back in the place of origin reject the novelties in a conscious or unconscious manner. Imitation, when other people imitate the use of a thing, an idea or practice uh, that come from abroad. Here, for instance, uh, when, uh, when the cleaners, carers and nurses uh, uh, got the new color of, uh, of uniform and they just accepted it and didn't introduce any novelties, uh, but it, uh, it worked as it was transferred. And finally, innovation, when other people in a reflexive way introduce uh, the novelties, maybe in a different context, uh, maybe with a different use. And here I would like to uh, give special attention to the process of resistance because it's really interesting to try to understand why uh, people back in the place of origin do not uh, accept the uh, novelties from abroad. Uh, and uh, here, uh, when we asked our uh, research participants about uh, why uh, their uh, families, uh, the places back in their place, uh, in their workplace, wouldn't accept the novelties. Uh, they said, I think that people are afraid of new things and that they are a little suspicious. Um, but also it depends on, the, uh, on how much the, uh, the habits are, are rooted so, for instance, uh, um, a lot of our interview partners, a lot of our research participants found that it was very difficult to uh, introduce the, uh, the driving culture uh, that they acquired in England. It was difficult to transfer it back to Poland because other drivers just had a different uh, driving culture, one that is not friendly uh, towards other users of, uh, of uh, car users, but also, uh, but also uh, people who walk and cross the streets. So here the quotation, I returned to Poland and was driving. There was a guy who was waiting to join my road and I gave the way to him. They were almost honking at the horn. How is it possible? I was astonished. So obviously it's difficult to change it when you're just an individual trying to, to be a friendly driver to your uh, to other users of the road. Thank you very much for listening to this uh, third part of the of the session about the post enlargement migration.